The secret to finding free time to draw and illustrate. This is a video that I wanted to do for the longest time dedicated for illustrators and creatives, for artists and creatives. And I've tried to do this video as a live stream and I just couldn't see both the window that I had to use for my presentation and the chat. So I didn't really think that it, it went that well. So I want to really try it now as a video class. We all find ourselves trying to find that slot of time, the slot of free time so that we can study more, practice, evolve, whatever we need to evolve. This video, although it's dedicated for artists and illustrators and creatives, actually it goes for everyone who's trying to find that free time. And I've prepared a special presentation so that we could go as well, looking at some slides and some information. So this is the presentation that I've prepared for you. I'm calling it the working sessions here at Ghost Paper. And hopefully this is the first of many of these talks, which I'll also link it to the playlist Becoming Pro, which has some really, really good content. Uh, actually not as uh, hugely seen as my other tutorials, but I do find that there are some really good little nuggets of information there that you can find for yourself in your artistic career. So because of that, it would be great if for this video could leave a like for this video because it helps for the message to get carried across. It helps to spread the message and it also helps for this message to reach other people like us who are trying to find this free time. And this channel is also dedicated to using the iPad as a medium for illustration. So right there, I'm trying to focus on some sort of a medium that is very easy to carry around. So you can take it to a coffee shop, you can take it to school, you can draw anywhere basically with the iPad instead of just carrying uh, you know, a chunky computer or a big Cintiq, which I get it, those are amazing tools, but really focusing on this channel for having such a light kind of transportable medium, I, I really think that this presentation actually fits very well with this channel. So let's start. The first thing that we need to do in order to identify and discover the secret to finding this free time is a couple of facts about what time really means for us. So time is something that is finite. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. You may get back some things in our lives. For example, if you miss a trip, you can try to book it again. If you miss a flight or you just really can take that time away, you can book it again and try to go next year, next month, in six months, or whenever you're able to. If you lose, for example, if you get sick and you lose a little bit of health, you can take care of yourself. You can go to the doctor, hopefully something small, you can just, you know, get it done in a couple weeks and you can get your health back. If you, uh, you know, eat well, if you exercise, you can also improve in your health. So those things are, you are actually able to get them back in some kind of a level. But time, once it's gone, it's gone. So that is one of the first facts. The next one is that time as a quantitative number, it actually relates to 1440. It, and that's a number, that's a really big number that I want you guys to memorize because this is the number of minutes we have in a day. That number doesn't change, is the same number for all of us. Of course, it's very, very important for us to realize that we all have different lives and life sets. So for example, some of us are full-time parents. Some of us have very busy work-life schedules. Basically, some people wake up, have to go to school, have to go to work, and they come back, and they only have a couple hours to have their meals, to be able to like, you know, take showers and sleep, and you don't have a lot of free time to do anything else. If you are one of these people, I do understand that your time is very, very limited, and it may just be you know, a chapter in your lifestyle, hopefully something that you can change soon, and it's going probably for some greater good. But still, I think this presentation will resonate with the possibilities that you may find in your near future. Next, some of us are still studying some kind of a course college, and that can be hugely time consuming. Uh, I know because I went through this process as well. It took me like a few years to actually graduate. And uh, to be completely honest, a lot of the skill set that I use these days I actually learned from real life, from work experience, from self-taught, um, from just like learning things on the go and also shared experiences by working at studios uh, as a freelancer. And I've learned a lot of things actually by uh, just, you know, the craft. So of course, that doesn't mean that I'm a master of anything, that I'm not like a know-it-all, like there's so much to learn and 
This is the beauty of this journey is that we're all students constantly learning and sharing our experiences for others. Next up is that even some of us may have all of the above. You may be at school, you have a very busy work life schedule, and you're also a full time parent. So the more things that you have on your list, the more things that you have during your day, the more you should try to pay attention to this class. So here's two examples. There is the example number one here on the left, someone who actually works just a nine to five job, uh, has no kids, has no partners, you know, has friends and family, but that only takes maybe a few hours on the weekend or maybe a couple calls on the weekdays. But let's just say that that person has about 18 hours where it's, um, you know, that person is working, uh, is, you know, having their meals, sleeping, and then that person probably has about six hours of free time to do whatever they want, quote unquote. So of course, like they may wanna exercise, they may wanna go see their friends, but they have six hours to plan whatever they wanna plan in those six hours. And now on the, on the example on the right side, we have the more busy work-life schedule. You have someone who also works nine to five, but also has possible kids, family, and has to do some study. So in this case here, adding up all of the work time and the sleeping time and the things that they have to do, you know, put your kids to bed, you have to make meals for your kids. It almost feels like that person needs 22 hours of their day to do all of those things and also be able to get a night, a, you know, a, a good night's sleep or like as much as they can. So that only leaves for that person on the second example about two hours of their day to do whatever they want. And by that, we have to give a lot of examples here as well. You may need to do some laundry, you may need to prep your meal for the next day. So that doesn't really give a lot of free time for the second example. So what is the goal for this presentation? Well, what I really would like you to focus in this presentation is first, we've identified the truths, the facts about time and the quantitative time and how time once is gone, is gone. Next, I would like to help us to list, identify and optimize your free time. And by free time, I mean that little slot that we were just talking on the previous slide. Some people may have more of that. Some others may have just a little bit, but you still have a little bit that you may be able to do something. Next up, I would love to help you structure your daily and weekly schedule. It's basically putting the work so that you have some free time. And finally, I would like to inspire you to take action because really all of this talk and all of this conversation, if it leads to action, if it leads to you doing something to at least trying to make something work, that is already much better than just doing nothing or just keep doing the same things over and over. So moving on, the next chapter of this talk is the identification, is to identify some of the things in our lives. So, you know, the next slide here, I know it's talking about making a list and I know that uh, I don't really want to focus on making lists in this video because there's a whole chain of, uh, there's a whole school of thought that believes that making lists doesn't solve anything that is more about putting into practice and putting into action, but this is more of an exercise. So this is not gonna be the list that you're going to take. You know, that's going to be the list of your to-do list, for example. This is not going to be a to-do list video. This is more about finding, again, the secret to find free time for you to do what you need to do. Whether it's illustrating, drawing, expanding your skills, research, finding a mentor, all of the above. So this list is a list of identification. So the first one is I would like you to make a list for goals for the near future. So instead of saying for, uh, I'm just gonna give you like more of a broad example, you could say, oh, I would like to master drawing the human figure. And that I would kind of have to say for the near future is a bit of a tall order to draw every muscle, draw every part of the body to become like a realistic you know, illustrator might be a little bit too much for a near future future goal. So let me give you a few examples. So more on the easier side for you to start so slow, start small and build up from there. Here's a few examples. You may want to get better at drawing characters in general, you know, practicing a few parts of the body, but not necessarily mastering the human anatomy. You could also want to understand color harmony a little bit better. You know, the relation of colors, some of the color, you know, modes, 
that even comes in uh, Procreate, such as the Analogas, Triadic, and a few others, and understanding the relationship between color hues and color temperature. And finally, maybe you want to develop your art style in the near future, even if you develop a little bit, if you've, even if you inject something new into your art style, which is a video I was just talking about, previous video on the playlist as well, on the Going Pro, this is already a great list for a near future goal list. So this is, of course, an example I would love for you to do your own list and come up with, with at least three things that you would like to do for the near future. So now I would like you to do a list of your daily actions. What are the things that you usually do throughout your week and maybe th throughout the weekend as well? I know those can vary. There are some more important days than others. For example, you may have a special day where you work a double shift or you may have something that you actually always do on the weekends, such as like helping your family. But still, I would like you to identify some of the things that you do on your daily life. And again, we're going to go into two examples here. Here's an example of a list of actions back in that first, you know, one of the first slides when we were talking about that person who had about six hours of free time. So let's just say that person wakes up at 8 a.m., has to go to work by 9.30, at 12.30 has, you know, lunchtime, 6.30, that person is at home, 7.30 has some dinner, 8.30 starts watching Netflix, the famous Netflix and chill, checks his Instagram. By 11.30, let's just say that itch starts to grow, such as like, you know, I haven't done much. I really want to keep studying. I would like to, you know, continue developing my art style. All of the things that that person has written in the list of near future goals. So by 11.30, the person is starting. That means that by like midnight, that person's already getting tired, it's going to bed, so you'd only really spent about half an hour to do anything. And really by spending half an hour, it's almost going to the gym and working out for that little bit of time when you're still warming up and you haven't really reached the peak time where you're developing, you're really working out your core, whatever the set that you're doing, you know, upper body, lower body. That person really only spent about half an hour to, you know, I work on his or her craft. So the purpose of this exercise, as you can see here, is to compare your list of goals. Once again, get better at drawing characters, understanding color harmony, developing your art style, and then comparing your list of actions. And by that, we're looking that from those three points, you've only put about half an hour to develop all of those three points. So there's definitely something we can do here. So basically, it's important to identify your studying environment. I'm not going to put this all on you or myself. There's something about the environment that evokes what we do about our lives as well. So here's a few examples. Here's a room, you know, let's just think of this as a bedroom. Someone is there. What, what are the things that we can see here in this room? So this room is darkly lit. I mean, it's super cool with lots of LEDs, but you know, um, it doesn't have a lot of light for you to study, read, draw, do anything. This room has, you know, there's, you can see in the corner, there's some like video game going. This dude is playing some NBA 2K or something. The table is like kind of messy. Again, doesn't have a lot of light. So what are the chances this person is going to do some study in this room? I would have to say, I would have to put it less than 30% chance. That is because the environment around it is not really creating some kind of a vibe for that person to study. More like so, again, turn on the PS4, turn on the Xbox, turn on Netflix, and just kind of zone out for a bit. Now, here's another example, and I know this one is super minimalistic and clean, and I'm not saying that this is what you need to do in your environment for you to achieve, you know, your prime creation or having like the best time of your life creating things. But what I'm trying to say here in this picture is a couple of things. First, notice there is no phone on this table, so there's not really a way. Of course, you can open your browser, you can uh, you know, keep uh, navigating on the internet by using your computer, but there's not really the um, addiction, the phone is not really there to actually, you know, the necessity to grab your phone and start looking at social media on your phone or re replying text messages. There's not a lot of distractions in this photo. It's basically your work study is your table where you sit down, and try to do some stuff. 
So optimizing your environment is something really, really important, making it easier for you to jump in, do some studying, some drawing, illustration, reading, and for you to be able to say, you know, I'm done for the day. This is the time that I have and I can just step out. And this really relates even here on this channel. When I shoot, when I when I'm about to make a video, I have my lights already set up here. I don't have to do a lot of things. I basically set up the camera. I, I, you know, check if I have battery on the camera, set up the lights, get the video going and I record. So if I had to actually, you know, put all of the stands from all of the lights and do all of the things, maybe the chances of me making a video would be actually less just because there is a bit of a setup. And if you have that already done, you just have to sit down, do some stuff and jump out. So basically optimizing means there is a, you know, there's less chance for procrastination for you to just say like, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. So now let's head into chapter three, which is taking action, which is for you to actually go about and do something to find that free time throughout your day. So I've made up a list here of things that you can do to actually help you in that sense. So starting with number one, start your day writing three things down that you would like to target. Within those three things, here's something that I would like to tell you. It would be great if you could manage those three things into one, should be something in your personal life, like paying the bill, calling the plumber, whatever you need to do to get your life going. The second one should be something related to your career. So studying, developing your art style, illustrating, all of the above. And the third one should be something you would like to research and investigate for the near future. So looking at a new art style that you may want to try out next month or next week, finding a mentor, looking for YouTube channels such as this one and finding videos to inspire you, finding tutorials. This is a great thing because you're doing one thing for your personal life, you're getting something that you need to get it out of the way. You're not really masking because sometimes even studying and doing things you're trying to maybe put aside some, some stuff that you need to do in your personal life. So it's good for you to also get that out of the way. Then you, you're also developing your own art style, career, illustrating, drawing, studying, doing all of the things that you need to do. And the third pillar is looking at the future, doing research, finding teachers, mentors, people who help you out, who can help you out in your career. So the next one is work that list within your calendar and not as a to-do list. And this is something that I was just mentioning a little earlier. This is not a video for you to do to-do lists, but more finding the slots. And we're going to talk about this, finding the slots where you're, you're going to be able to insert those three things. So for example, you could do one thing in the morning, you can do another thing in the afternoon and one maybe in the evening time. So here's an example, structuring your day and taking action. Let's just say that you wake up now at 7 a.m. and from 7 to 8.45, you can do some research either on your phone, on your computer, about a new art style they would like for you, that you would like to try. From 9.30 to 6.30, you go to work, famous nine to five, and then from 6.30 to 7.30, you actually spend some time looking at your social media, replying messages, checking for stuff. So you, you know, you save that time for that, for you save that slot for looking at your social media. You don't, Keep checking on your social media throughout the day. And I know that it, there's that, you know, that feeling that you want to check and see how things are going, but nothing is really going to go away. You can just really leave a, you know, a, a selected slot for that. So from 7.30 to 8.30, you actually can spend some time having dinner and Netflix. If you just live by yourself, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to attend to, to your kids or if you don't have a partner at the moment. And from 8.30 to 11.30, you can be creating content. And by 11.30, you can be in bed sleeping to, for the next day. So what I'm trying to say here is that from those three things that we've just listed as, as the list of actions, we've broken that down throughout the day. So you don't have to do all three at the same time. You don't have to do all three in a slot of the day. Defining within your day will make things easier and will help you to you know, get one thing done and inspire you to get the following, the next one done as well. So um, here's another example. You could actually, you know, need to wake up at six, from six to eight, uh, 8 a.m. You need to take care of your kids. Then you take them to daycare. You go to work, you work from 9.30 to five, 
pick up your kids, have dinner, to, uh, give them a bath, put them to bed, and by 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., you have some of your personal time by that. I meant, you know, the laundry, you're doing things that you need, uh, you know, prepping meals for the next day. And then from 8.30 to 10.30, you can be drawing and studying. And that is two hours here, just one hour short from the person that had way more time throughout their day to do things. So by 11 p.m., you go to bed so that by 6 a.m. you have to be up again because you have a lot of things to do throughout your day. So basically, also one thing that's really important to know is that if you have three hours in your day, if you have two hours in your day, it's also important that you can use this technique that I use on colors. I use this technique on many things, which is a kind of a golden ratio relationship, which I call it the 60-30-10 rule. So now let's just use the two examples that we had. Um, let's just say that we, all that you have is two hours on a few days of the week you could spend 60% of that time drawing, which is about 1.2 hours. Then you could spend 30% studying and doing research, which is still about 36 minutes that you could spend on Pinterest, looking for references, looking on your social media for new references. And about half an hour is a good chunk of, of, of time if you're really focused doing that research. And then on the last 10% of time, you can do some personal social media. So this time you're actually going on social media, but you're replying your messages that, you know, that were sent to you or messages that you want to send to other users. And that is about 12 minutes. So if you pack that in, if you're really focused on replying a certain number of people and looking at a certain, certain number of accounts and continuing that on the next day, instead of just binging 12 minutes, it's really a good chunk of time to do all of that in one day. You can always continue in uh, over the next day. So here are a couple other things that can really help you out to find some free time. And one is actually funny, but planning your meals ahead can be a huge time saver. So preparing meals ahead on Sundays, for example, can help you get through your evening faster with those precious hours of study. Also, as we've just talked uh, before about optimizing your environment, blocking out distractions can be a huge help. So try to sit in a, in a room with no TV, try to leave your phone charging in another room, and all of these things to block out possible distractions. So in this one, in this list, I find this is one of the most important ones when it comes to action. Action by just going and drawing, action by just going and doing research, I really find that it's important to divide this into three pillars. So the first pillar is finding a mentor, as I was just mentioning, finding channels. And I know, you know, humbly speaking, Ghost Paper, I do find this is a channel where you have a lot of information that you can learn and share with others. Second one is keep doing some research. So don't stop just here. Of course, go to Pinterest, go to other channels, learn, learn from other mentors, go to, uh, you know, schools, books, any kind of like mentorship where you get some quality information that, that puts you in the right track is hugely important. And then lastly, it's important to keep practicing, of course, to find your own mistakes, things that you can improve, like polishing a diamond, this is what and how you should you should see your work, your art, and your career. Those three pillars, this is how they relate or the consequence of each one of these pillars. By finding a mentor, a mentor, it helps you to expand your ideas by looking at things in some other way that you haven't really seen throughout that prism or that angle. By doing some more research, it helps you to expand your creativity with new ideas. And finally, by keep practicing, helps you to expand your skills. So it's also important to remember to take notes. Of course, our brain is made to process information, not so much as just to keep storing it over and over and over. And by taking notes and writing down on a piece of paper, we do a thing that's called brain dumpings, which allows us to free space from our brain so that we can take new ideas, new references, and that will certainly help us in the quest for discovering our art style and working on our on our art. Next up, how to beat procrastination. Make sure that your study environment is easy and accessible to jump in, something that we've already kind of covered here in this presentation. 
Then of course, try to set goals, but set rewards. So all of these things that we've been talking here, and if you're just constantly churning and working and you know going over and over and over, it's important for you to set some rewards. And it doesn't, they don't need to be big rewards. You don't need to travel the globe once you finish like an illustration, but certainly try to give yourself a little pat in the back. So for any of these tasks that you complete, and finally, it's important to remember to have fun. So if you're doing something and you're, um, you know, you're struggling, of course, there's that little bit of initial time when you're, when you're trying to, you know, learn a new craft, nor learn a new art style, or get something going. But if it's something that is kind of lasting more than I would say maybe like six months even, and we all have different learning curves, but if it's really lasting a longer time period. This may be something that you want to take a step back and realize and think if this is really for you or if there's something you're trying to do that you could be doing better. Let me give you some examples. Some people love to illustrate digitally. Some others like to paint with real oil paints, watercolor, and uh, it's, just, it's just a matter of like how you would like to express yourself. So it's important to try all of these and discover which, which is the one that you have the most fun. For example, I actually loved playing with color watercolors, but I actually had a bit of a bit of a hard time playing with uh, just inking like real inks and illustration. And that's just something that I discovered out of practicing. So it's important for you to try to practice this, these things and learn which are the things that you're having the most fun. And this may be a signal of the things that you would actually would like to excel at because they are coming a little bit easier for you. So in conclusion, guys, the secret to finding free time, we have to first identify our schedule. We have to make a list of actions and compare it to what we're actually doing with our daily lives, with our daily time. Try to find those free slots, try to reorganize your free time. And I know this sounds like putting in the work, but you're actually setting yourself up for success. You're setting yourself up to find free time that you can use it to expand your skills. And if you're right now, if you have half an hour, 20 minutes, it doesn't really matter. Try to put as much, you know, as much time as you can try to find that slot. As long as this is all the time that you have, use the 60, 30, 10 technique to divide into, you know, practicing time, looking for research, uh, for references and doing some research and finally doing your own personal social media. But if you find a little bit more time, that's going to be a huge help for you. And you can do that by doing the exercises that we've covered in this presentation. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, speed paint videos, and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.